This is the story of our one day in Antigua. We visited Valley Church Beach, Shirley Heights Lookout, and Nelson's Dockyard. We swam with stingrays and enjoyed a full island tour with lunch. Now we're gonna pass our local market and you're gonna see a statue of the first Prime Minister. So he was the first Prime Minister that was appointed in 1981. And his name is B.C. Bird, B. A. Cornwall Bird. So when we got independence in 1981, he was the first appointed Prime Minister. We booked our tour with Gordon Tours and Travel, and our guide for the day was a guy called Jerome. We like to eat our own local meat that we bring. Like goat, it's more popular than that. Like goat meat before? Yeah. Yeah, goat meat is a real popular meat. And we use goat for milk and meat, not for cheese. Jerome was fabulous. He really loved his job and gave us loads of interesting information about the island. We eat a lot of beef, a lot of pork, but goat meat is a more popular local dish. You will see in a lot of local, you know, local venues around the island. We have the chicken farm on the right side, and here is the chicken farm. Oh, yeah. We have 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 the you guys want to have some time on this beach here? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Let me just pull over here out of the way. Antigua is famous for its beaches with one beach for nearly every day of the year. Our first stop was Valley Church Beach. Absolutely beautiful on the west coast of the island, just below Jolly Harbour. This is Coco's Hotel on the north end of Valley Church Beach. On the south end of the beach is Coco Bay Resort. Jerome was telling us that one hotel is owned by a brother and the other one owned by his sister. I guess that's what you call keeping it in the family. We walked all the way down to the other end and there were some wooden buildings up on the hill and they all had uh, like infinity pools. Yeah, that's Coco's Hotel. Coco's. Coco's, the one over here now is Coco's Bay. Between the two boats? Yes, that's St. Lucia there you see between You can just here. see it. And St. Kitts, I have to stop. St. Kitts will be somewhere over that. Oh yes. Look there, it's in the clouds, we can't see it. It's not hundred percent visible. Look straight that way guys. You see how uh, like a landmark in the water, that's St. Kitts. So that's where you Of the black people on the island. 
said black pineapple? Nope, it goes like any old pineapple. tickets like lunch dinner tickets and that money is not used to pump back into the churches this guy over here now he does stone work he gets the green limestone and he makes different decoration for the green limestone that's what he's doing here it was now time to continue our journey along the south coast of the island we wanted to go and visit Nelson's Dockyard, Falmouth Harbour and English Harbour but first we wanted to stop off at Shirley Heights Lookout. This gives you a great vantage point over the whole of the area with stunning views. Shirley Heights is a restored military lookout and gun battery. The lookout, which is about 490 feet high, affords a superb view of both English and Falmouth harbours. Robot right here. That guy did it by himself in 2004 2005. Wow. One person, 116 days. That's a little boat. What Jerome is talking about is the premier event in ocean rowing, a challenge that will take you more than 3,000 miles from San Sebastian in La Gomera, Canary Islands, to Nelson's Dockyard in English Harbour, Antigua. The annual race begins in early December with up to 30 teams participating from around the world. This is Falmouth Harbour in Antigua. Nelson's Dockyard. We wish we could have spent more time at Nelson's Dockyard. It was really fascinating. But we had added in swimming with stingrays at Stingray City on the north coast of the island. This is something that we didn't want to miss on our one day in Antigua. And it was well worth the visit. On arrival, we checked in for our pre-booked experience. We then sat down with the knowledgeable staff who gave us a safety briefing and lots of information about the southern rays that we were soon to meet face to face. Following the briefing, we boarded the motorboat which would take us the two and a half miles out to a floating dock out into the Caribbean Sea where we would meet the stingrays. In no time at all we arrived at a really shallow pool with a white sandy bottom and a coral reef which enclosed it. The rays swim wild, they're not enclosed in any way, but as soon as the boat arrives so do the rays. The guides feed the rays with squid, so I guess it's a free lunch. At the briefing earlier, the guides had told us to do what was called the stingray shuffle. This involved shuffling our feet across the bottom of the sand rather than actually taking steps. Stingrays never attack humans of any size unless provoked, as they don't consider us to be prey. It's important to understand that stingray barbs are only used when the stingray feels in grave danger. We were able to shuffle or snorkel with the stingrays for about half an hour. We then had our photos taken and taken back by the boat to land. Once we got back to land, we had a nice cool shower and enjoyed rum punches. What an amazing day. Thanks for watching the video. We really hope that you like it. 
please give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll try to post some more interesting travel videos shortly.